Hey, this is Ryan Higley in the Instructional Technology Center, and today I'm going to be talking to you about uh, course evaluation reports inside of Blackboard. Now, course evaluations, you might think those might be something like tests or quizzes that you give to students for uh, to evaluate them. But this is actually more about um, reports that you generate for individual students or your group as a whole um, that show you uh, different details about course activity and usage. So um, we're going to look at it in a couple different ways. There's lots of different reports that you can download um, and lots of different data that you can get from these. And we'll talk about what you might do with that data and, and also just uh, which parts of the class you're going to be looking at. So right now I'm starting mine in uh, the self-paced course just uh, just because that seems convenient and uh, um, we're gonna break this up into maybe three maybe four different videos uh, just because there's lots of reports and lots of different things to go through. So this first one we'll just sort of do an overview and we'll do the first couple reports just to get our feet wet. Okay so I'm in the course right now and I'm gonna scroll down to the left hand side and under this control panel you'll see one called evaluation. If you click on evaluation you're gonna have three, you might have two, you might have four um, different uh, uh, things to click on on the left hand side. Uh, course reports and performance evaluation are always going to be there. Um, SCORM reports you might have certain things for that. But So uh, what a course report is is um, a detailed picture of student activity in your course. Um, so this includes details about uh, uh, what content students are accessing within the course, when they're accessing it, um, uh, which courses areas are being used most frequently, um, any patterns for specific students or, or the whole class as a whole, uh, student logins, when they logged in last, uh, when they checked their grade center, how long they've spent in the course, um, and uh, even what pages or discussion boards or things like that, that they're accessing. So these can give you a lot. And in fact, we'll go into this. That won't be one just report that you'll get all that information. There'll be a few that you can generate. Uh, a performance dashboard um, is a report that um, talks about each user's progress and activity within the course. So if you have um, adaptive release schedules, it'll show who's who can see what content, um, things like discussion board posts, how many, how often they've been getting into the discussion board, uh, then you can actually read each of their posts from within these reports and everything too, so it's pretty comprehensive. And then SCORM reports, finally, we're not going to really go into that one, uh, what SCORM reports um, are for SCORM content that you've loaded into your course. and if you don't know what SCORM content is, uh, basically that's just a standard for learning management system content. Uh, you can create it yourself and things like Camtasia that I'm recording this on right now can produce SCORM content. Most of it you're probably going to get from book manufacturers or other people creating content for you and loading it into the course. And what those SCORM reports will do is they will give you uh, detailed information about how students are accessing and using that SCORM content. Okay, so let's start out. I'm going to just click on course reports and uh, it's going to open up and you're going to see a few different areas that you can uh, get reports for. Um, I'm not going to read each one of these. It, you know, it, it pretty much spells out what, what each one of these reports does. But what I am going to show you is a report from each of the areas just so you can see sort of uh, what the detailed information you're going to get from each of the reports and, and how you might use that in your course. So. Uh, there's also, a, you notice, a search up here at the top. You're not going to be using that to get um, details or content uh, uh, descriptions from your course. Uh, really, just this is for actually finding which one of these reports you want to use. But since there's only maybe eight, I doubt you're going to be uh, needing to do comprehensive searches to find which report you want to do. Uh, so let's see. So I'm just going to talk about the first one. All user activity inside of content areas. Pretty self-explanatory. If you've created a content area inside of Blackboard, this is going to show you um, either for individual students or for the entire class or just certain groups of students, uh, how many times they've clicked on each of that content and when they've accessed it. So to get these reports, all you're going to do is click the downward arrow to the right of it and hit run. Now, this might actually take a minute, so uh, actually it only it only took a few seconds, but sometimes that can take up to like a minute or two for that to actually get to this next option screen. And the reason that that is is because uh, it has to look at lots of information for your class before it, can, uh, before it can bring this up. So if you see it just sitting there thinking for a while, don't think that maybe something is wrong. Give it a few minutes, come back to it, see if it's brought you to this option screen. 
So what this options screen is going to show you is uh, what format do you want this end report to give you? It, it's set to PDF and that's the one that I like, but you can also get HTML, you can get Excel if you'd like to download it to that, or you can just get a Word document as well. There's also a select start date and end date. Uh, the, the start date, uh, probably you want, you know, at the beginning of the semester and the end date, you know, at the end of the semester. But you might also want to check maybe for a specific week that you um, that you put out a certain type of content and see how, which when students were accessing it. Or if you gave everyone um, a three week project, was everybody doing it at the last minute or were they having deadlines throughout there? So a lot of times um, don't just think that you have to do the start date at the beginning and the end of the semester, you can narrow it down. And then below that, in section number three, there's going to be a list of all the students that are in your class. I'm not actually going to scroll down to that because I don't want to, uh, for privacy's sake, I don't want to show you all the students in the class. Um, but down there, there'll be those. And what you will do is you could select all of them if you want everyone from the class, or you could just do certain selections if you're just focusing on a couple students. So once you have all your selections done, you're just going to hit submit. And what that's going to do is it's going to run your report and uh, it's going to give you an option to download it when it's done. Now, to run that report, it might take a while. So uh, don't be discouraged if you see it sitting there and you come back after 15 minutes and it's still not done. Uh, depending on how big your class is, how many students, what the uh, what you selected as a start and end date, how long that was, um, it could take you know 15, 20 minutes, an hour. It might even take two hours or more. So uh, uh, this might be something where you might want to, if you find it taking a long time, set it overnight, leave it, come back the next day. So just don't be discouraged if you see it taking a long time. It might might not be that something's wrong it's just taking a while okay so I'm going to show you what the report would look like okay so here's the PDF that was created for my uh, course report and you can see up here at the top this has all user activity inside of content areas so these are my folders my, my content areas that I created and they should look sort of familiar for you welcome to blackboard blackboard without training wheels the leaderboard the badges things like that all things that you've seen inside and this shows how many hits and what percentage uh, of the course was was used for that so getting started in blackboard the highest percent and welcome people starting out getting at the beginning of the course that makes sense that those are high percentages now when it says hits we need to talk about what blackboard means by hits so uh, what a hit does is it uh, it tracks when a person has made a request into blackboard so what does that mean well let's say we were looking at discussion boards if we had three hits in a discussion board that might not necessarily be that that person went to three different dis discussion board topics you would get one hit for just clicking on to get into the discussion board your second hit would be to click into the forum and then your third click would be on to get into the message to read it so really that would be three clicks for someone to get into one message so think about that when you're looking at individual students and seeing how often they've gotten to the class or how many times they've been clicking around and things sometimes it might take a single click to get into something you'll have to see how your course is set up but so now this is showing me all inside my content areas and then uh, normally this would be uh, this would be a list of students along the left hand side but I've grayed them out for privacy concerns and what this does is it shows all my different content areas and then how many times each student has clicked into those so uh, you can see this person was very active in the class and some people weren't as much but you can go through and uh, uh, find out everyone so this will that's the first page now the second or I think it's the third or fourth page uh, this this one has a breakdown of every single day within my time frame and just how many clicks were, were uh, how much content was accessed during those times. This can give you a good overview of uh, when students were getting into the course, when the highest activity levels for uh, trying to retain that content. And then farther on down the list, uh, this would normally have students along the left-hand side again, but this is now broken down by month. So uh, I have, uh, this is September, and this has the 30 days in September, and it shows each student and how many times they clicked into content throughout that time. So 175 days on the 8th is this one student, but then you can see uh, patterns that, that will show up that will help you design your content for future courses. So we can see that it goes through each of the months and shows you uh, then a total at the bottom for each student or not each student, for each day. So, so that's the, um, uh, uh, the first course report that we're talking about. Really good information there for uh, learning about the, the habits of your, uh, each student in your course. So I'm gonna close that one. I'm gonna go back. 
and uh, we're going to talk about another of these reports. So the next one down here is Course Activity Overview. Now the Course Activity Overview is more about um, what exactly is the time that each student is spending in your course and uh, the overall time and the average time and things like that. Uh, when I go and I say that uh, to run this one, it's not going to actually give me the option to select individual students. This is going to um, to show all the students um, as a group. So all you'll do is you'll select your date range again and you'll hit submit. So I'm going to bring up the, uh, the second course report so we don't have to wait for it. Okay, so here's my second report, and what this is showing is the number of students uh, that I have in the class, the date range of everyone, and then this is the course overview. So this is user activity broken down by day, and you can see how many hours people have spent uh, within the course, and then also uh, the total time and the average time per user. So I can see that our course, our uh, Blackboard self-paced course, was most heavily used uh, on Wednesdays, sort of building up to the middle of the week and then coming down nobody was working on it Saturday and Sunday apparently <laughs> uh, so then we have total average time just shy of 200 hours and then average time per user just shy of six so then later on down the course we're going to see each of the students um, overview broken down by individuals so right now these would normally have the name of the student along the left and then you can see that uh, this is the amount of time that they've spent inside the course uh, right here we have a uh, uh, our average bar this yellow line shows the, the average so these students a little below the average oh this guy's way above the average so this will just go through it'll show you each of your students and just how much time they spent in the course so that can be really helpful for showing you just uh, the overall activity for each of your students so I'm gonna back out of this one and we're gonna talk about the next one and then we're gonna move on to the uh, uh, another video to show the rest so the next one I actually don't have a report for because uh, the course performance the third one down is uh, more about uh, measuring goals and course alignments within your course so if you've set up goals or you've set course alignments inside of blackboard this will show you um, basically give you data on, on a breakdown for individual students of how they reach those goals or didn't reach those goals and also within your alignments so uh, if you have those within the course this will give you the same sort of thing so you can run this one so uh, when we come back on the other side this will be uh, the second video in, in the uh, course evaluation reports tutorial and we'll talk about uh, the second half of these reports and we'll also get into that uh, performance dashboard so uh, thank you for watching this tutorial